will in five months and then we'll have to go back in and do it again.
ready to do business. It is November 15th, 7 p.m. meeting. And first item of business will be to approve the minutes of the November 1st board meeting. Packet. Make a motion that we approve the minutes with any correction necessary. Second. All right, we've got a motion. Uh, are there any corrections anyone would like to note? Call roll, please. For Mike Moody. Yes. For Beaverson. Yes. Those Riley. Yes. For Travis. Yes. For Terry Moody. Yes. For Brewer. Yes. All right. Next up is communication from the County Judge Executive. I will be adding a couple of things to the agenda um, under the um, hiring for. Um, recycle center there is another hire that I'd like to bring forward to um, also we have plumbing repairs over at the sheriff's office that we just got the quotes on this uh, the last one that, uh, this um, so we'll be bringing that up under new business uh, and uh, there's some quotes that have been distributed to you all uh, once we uh, dealt with that. Somebody uh, maybe me can give their copy up to the clerk so the clerk has that for the night. So, um, having said that, uh, of course, everyone knows or should know filing for county offices has begun. So, um, it is time to um, stand up if you're going to run for one of these elected positions. And the deadline. Uh, if I'm correct, it is January the 7th at uh, 4 p.m. Um, I am going to need approval. Uh, we're in the process of um, decorating for Christmas holiday. Um, the, as you come down Main Street this evening, it really looks nice uh, with the poles wrapped and so forth. But we generally put up wreaths in the courthouse windows and various windows around the county offices. Those wreaths have not been replaced for probably at least a decade. I don't see Karen Spencer here, but it's it's been uh, longer than she could remember. So, so they're, they're really, a lot of them are just coming apart and they need to be replaced. So I had them get some um, prices and it was going to run just a little over a thousand dollars. I'm not sure just exactly how much over a thousand, but what I'd like is a motion to approve uh, purchasing the replacement wreaths for the courthouse and offices up to a maximum of fifteen hundred. So moved. We've got a motion. Second. And a second. How many other models do you know? I do not know. Every window on the courthouse gets down. Yeah, I think they're going to change change a little bit about how they're where they're putting them and what goes up. But, um, and then once we determine, uh, uh, in talking to Karen late this afternoon, uh, I want her to determine how many of these things we need to declare surplus and probably throw them away. To, to um, <clears throat> Next thing I want to talk about is the ARPA. Uh, so you want to start the vote on that vote? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. I, thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none. We'll go ahead and get this over. Thank you. Uh, ARPA, uh, as you all know, and I've sent you some information out, the Senate had passed a bill that would free up some of the strings that are attached to the ARPA money up to 10 million well we don't have 10 million we've got 3.758 so all of our 3.758 would be covered if they passed this bill in the house and the president signs it it basically cuts all the strings that are attached and you can treat that as if it is uh, calculated as lost revenue we could do that we could use that for pretty much anything that we uh, uh, want but it will declare it all, uh, all of our 3.758 million, we could 
use however we see fit. And uh, so you know, we'll keep our eye on that and uh, do, you know, so far we've committed 500,000 for the proposals that uh, Spectrum and Barstown Cable or have got applications into the uh, <clears throat> Kentucky Infrastructure Authority for uh, expanding broadband and uh, we'll just wait and see. It's probably going to be around sometime after the first of the year before they decide on that. Um, there is a, a letter in your packet that um, I sent to, supposed to be in the packet, um, uh, maybe it was in the last meeting where I wrote to uh, um, uh, Secretary Mike Berry it's uh, asking how the letter, I know the email is in there where they re, where he responded. It was a very positive response. What I don't know and have any feel for for everybody sitting around this table is, is this something, you know, I don't want to, you know, go down that road and, and put a lot of work into to uh, trying to make something happen there if there's no appetite for it around this table. If you all say, no, we're not interested in putting a, you know, special needs playground in, that's fine with me. I just will not pursue trying to release land up at you know, um, the uh, Corps of Engineers. But I would like to have your all's uh, input on that to, you know, if it's, like I say, if it's, there's just no sense in me going any further if, if it's going to die around this table, or, you know, it's, it's save, save the time and exercise. Um, if, is that something you all feel like you would? like to pursue further uh, but let me just say this is there any objection to doing that um, we're looking at the possibility of a destination playground uh, similar to what's gone in down in Owensboro <coughs> and various places around the country if you google that you can find all kinds of information about it I see it as a economic development tourism type of a project, as well as providing something for our residents, but also to draw people in from uh, outside of the county that would, would uh, uh, appreciate having something like that. I am also talking to uh, an entity, um, just, just started some conversations with an entity that may want to partner with us on a project like that. So make it even better, but if, 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 I guess if, if there's objection, I, I'd like to hear it now, because if it's overwhelming objection to, to pursuing that, like I say, it just makes no sense if we put any more time and effort into it. Uh, I object to the use of ARPA funds. Period. Period. Okay. Uh, Kent, is, is it possible that we can lease the 100 acres or whatever without uh, saying what we're going to use it for? Uh, it's possible. I think it's going to help to have a, a use for it. Um, but I mean, if we could, if we could get that uh, in writing that we, we've got that area, that if this doesn't happen, then something else mm -hmm. could. <coughs> um, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure. I mean, I don't even know if, if it will fly. You know, I just, I thought that when you look at that email reply from Secretary Barry, it was very positive, and uh, James Allen Tipton is uh, one of them that, that they, they had talked to, and I had him in my office uh, last week, and uh, it's something that he would be very supportive of. Uh, and our next um, step would be to try to set up a meeting with the Department of Parks and some of these entities at the state level with uh, Representative Tipton and myself. As he put it, it would be better to have that meeting here where they can put the food on the ground and see exactly what it is. And we, we have a total of around somewhere around 300 acres of food and that includes edge I, I'm not sure that they fully really understand. I'm not interested in leasing the, the land that the resort is on. We don't want to change and interfere in that. 
this clear ground, flat ground, real ground? It, it, for the most part, it's flat. I think okay. um, you know, it's, it's in grass or trees. Or you know, it's pretty well. Uh, at one time, they used to mow it, but you know, when you don't mow it, it you know, you end up with trees. Who's going to maintain it? You know, um, well, we don't have all those answers uh, at this time, um, but. What I, what I see this as, and that's, I think, the purpose of, of the lease before that we had with the state was for, I think, recreational purposes. Uh, then we turned around and subleased a, a portion of that to the developers of Edgewater. Uh, um, so, again, there's nothing uh, at all concrete. I just want to, you know, there's no objection to me moving forward with trying to release, say, a, you know, I don't know whether it's going to be 100 acres or 50 acres or 150 acres. I don't know. You know I just wanted to open the dialogue with the uh, folks up in Frankfurt that, that make those decisions. And, uh, anything we do would be subject to approval by the Corps of Engineers because it's Corps of Engineers' property. So, um, so enough, enough on that. I don't want to go too long on, on any of these things. Um, and, uh, so I just wanted to inform you that's where we are. I know you know, Brad, you made your position clear on the offer money. So um, that's not uh, a surprise. Um, so uh, with that, um, I've sent, I think I've sent you all some information. This OSHA ruling on vaccine mandates is out there hanging. There's quite a few lawsuits uh, flying around on that, but uh, it's something that we all need to be aware of. You know, uh, I, I certainly don't like it, uh, but it may very well be. We would be subject to that mandate if it's overturned. I mean, I don't, I don't see how it's constitutional, uh, but it has to go through the court process to determine that. They're saying a start date is January 4th, and it's it's pretty burdensome on any employer, private or public employer. We've got over 100 employees. It includes full or part-time employees, and we're well in excess of that. So, uh, you know, if if it does go through, I can tell you we we are we need it anyway, but we are going to have to have someone in the human resource position that has some human resource experience and, and uh, knowledge. But anyway, I just wanted to update you on that. Keep your eye on it. I certainly will be. Uh, the budget process is going to begin pretty soon. Uh, you know, as everyone knows, I've uh, issued a letter to both the sheriff and the county clerk to uh, hopefully by December 1st uh, you know, submit their budget uh, budgets and salary cap request for, for deputies uh, they're both of them uh, fee offices their budget that they submit to us is a very simple budget how much do you anticipate in, in fees and how much do you anticipate turning over to fiscal court their operating budget their line by line operating budget is incorporated in our fiscal year budget. So we don't need the line by line, we just need the, basically the, the estimated revenue. Uh, and of course the, the requested salary cap. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, this will come up under new business as a pay rate committee. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, today's National Recycle Day. Got the uh, upcoming holidays, uh, Thanksgiving, of course, is the 24th and 25th. Uh, the all county offices will be closed, uh, with the exception of some. Uh, Christmas is the 23rd and 24th, and then we've got New Year's is the 30th and 31st. Uh, I just, uh, just to let you know, I have scheduled some very needed time off for the RMR. Later this week, I still have a couple of things that I have to do in terms of some uh, depositions and some litigation and, and, uh, and some, and some payroll checks going on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, and, uh, 
then uh, I think uh, I'm not sure that the KIPA meetings have been moved to uh, uh, Tuesday. Uh, next Tuesday, I uh, may actually not go to this one, but, uh, And then, uh, uh, I do want to mention we have a very distinguished guest with us this evening. We have the First Lady of Elk Creek. Great to have you here. I'm trying to get a run for county judge next year. So. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Never had a husband and wife on this table. There so you go. We'll see. All right. So with that, I'm going to move on, and we're going to go to communications from citizens. Anyone here wish to address the court? All right. Seeing none. Communication reports from members, other offices, and committees. Zoning. Julie, you're up. We'll see how quickly we can make this. We have one second reading, and it is in District 5, and that's application of Robert L. and Nina S. Jones, requesting Ag1 Agricultural to R1 Residential on 1.54 acres, located at 3650 Mill Road. Commissioner Travis made the motion to make the zone change for Robert L. and Nina S. Jones requesting zone change from I-1 Agricultural to R-1 Residential on 1.54 acres located at 3650 Mill Road. It does meet the recommended land use map in the comprehensive plan of medium density residential. The change would be in compliance with the comprehensive plan and no one has objected to the zoning change. Um, that motion was seconded by Commissioner Noel. Motion carried. A motion to approve based on the facts and findings of the Planning and Zoning Committee. Second. We got a motion and we got a second. That name sounds familiar to me for some reason, but uh, call the roll on that, please. Good Friday. Yes. For Travis. Yes. For Jay Moody. Yes. For Brewer. Yes. For Mike Moody. Yes. For Peterson. Yes. Motion passes. That's all I have. And nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, EMS, this one. Just like to remind everybody that the uh, food drive for the holiday food baskets kicks off uh, December 4th at Country Mart. We'll be collecting from 10 to 2, has some other dates instead of in between there. We're giving out the food baskets uh, Saturday the 18th. It's a Saturday before Christmas, I think it's 18th. Uh, the City of Taylorsville has approved to let us uh, store and, and create the boxes in the City Hall of Things. That's all I have. Yeah, we don't have a key player in that whole yes, exercise. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> all right, and we've got some other things we're going to get to. Uh, safety committee report? Nothing at this time. Nothing at this time. Solid waste committee? Nothing at this time. Recycle day. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, veterans Committee reports, Mark Brewer. Yes, uh, the flags at the uh, Circuit Court Clerk's Office and in front of the uh, Clerk's Office, neither one of them are illuminated properly. The one on the Circuit Court is not illuminated at all. And the one in front of the Courthouse is bad. Also in front, of, uh, in, front of, in front of the lens. Okay, there is a, a make note the, of this, Randy, because there is a, a light. I think it may be just misaligned. It is. That's exactly what it is. Okay. It's not to be on cross streets and I'm walking. There is not, yes, there's not a light on the okay. well, it's supposed to be. Okay. 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 Also, the uh, Kentucky State flag in front of the uh, courthouse the clerk's office, it, it's badly torn into the Okay. And make yeah. note of that. Let's get on that. It's on order. Okay. Anything else from the veterans? Nothing. All right. What the committee report? Jerry Moody. All right. The other international dump truck that I suggested get rid of is down. We would probably get five, ten thousand. What is it? The international dump truck. Oh, okay. Yeah, Todd told me about that. Uh, and it's going to need some repairs. I think he's getting some estimates. Uh, yeah. Um, do it's going to be three weeks before our next meeting. Do we want to? Authorize him to go ahead and, and get those repairs uh, subject to your 
Um, I think so because of the season. That's a foul play. Um, what was what, what's it? What's it eight? Well, you're not a hundred percent sure yet, but some of them can't find a new head. So it's a motor car. Yeah. You know, so it's international. I warned the court about it. Yeah. And what was coming. They're just not worth it. You know, I can't say what they were. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not worth it. It's a jump. Yeah. It's got 20 some odd thousand miles in the Yeah. I mean, it just. Um, well, knowing the the need for it, and I mean, I don't think we'll be able to go out and buy a truck um, to replace it for what it's going to cost to repair that. I you may know, be wrong. No, uh, you're not. Right. But um, you know, I would rather. I, I'm, I'm sure we that that's repair. We have to be. We have to repair. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure it's going to be over a thousand dollars. That's going to be more than I can authorize. Ooh. So, yeah, it's you know, it's going to be over. It's probably going to hit ten or more. It could. Yeah. The time you buy here and start paying the mechanic and the diagnosis, and then after you get it back to good and you've got all that pollution stuff to get lined out again, yeah. uh, it could very easily be going over 10. I would say this, this goes for 15 and you go ahead and get it done and between the two of us, we'll kind of pull the cost down as much as we can. But okay. Do we need a little sure now? I'll make a motion we go ahead and have it repaired up to fifteen thousand dollars. You wanna make that subject to Jerry's uh, yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that. We've got a motion and we've got a second. Any comments, questions, or concerns? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes, and that's up to fifteen thousand. Is that right? Yes. Hopefully, it's five. But you know, I, I, I think uh, I'd rather be able to go ahead and move on. Do you know what Dell thinks? Yeah, he's. I know. Well, we're getting. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to about it, and this is my feeling. He's a Outstanding mechanic. Yes. Outstanding Mac mechanic. Absolutely. But uh, I had him look at a truck that I had bought and sold and before I sold it. And he come over and he said, Oh, I think what's on this truck? He said, I don't know what he's saying. And I, and I said a little bit easy to Todd because I kind of make no way to try to keep everybody a little bit better. But I don't know. Yeah, so I was going to talk to Dale, you know, but he's okay. getting other prices. Uh, okay. okay, yeah. But we are getting one from Aaron Nashville to start here. Okay. Because he didn't know how to price the job to start with, see. Okay. I mean, there's a difference between <clears throat> the older mechanics and the newer mechanics. You know, I'm not, and there's nothing against either one of them, but this uh, new electronic stuff is so much on this pollution that international can't even get right. would be hard for, for me to get it right. And I'm not saying that, I don't mean to be derogatory at all. Yeah. That's it. Well, at some point we know what we need to do is get rid of those things and get something that's reliable, but you know, in the meantime we'll We'll uh, try to get that up and running for uh, snow season. It, it needs to go to, if you want to know the truth about it, it needs to go to Campbellsville. Campbellsville, okay. Oh, for repair? It would be the best place to um, well, you and Todd yeah, and I'll and that, 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 out. that would, there would be no more pollution problems to it. Well, I won't go any further with that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, Telecommunications. Uh, having heard nothing back from the committee members, I have moved the, um, plus I'm getting some uh, telecom training this Wednesday. Uh, our meeting is going to be next Monday, 5.30. It is a Zoom meeting and I've already sent that.
in your office to be posted. Okay, that'll be a special meeting then. Awesome. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's a regular meeting and then we'll get our regular dates from Oh, meeting. okay. All right. Did you, did you send that to Brittany? Or? Brittany. Okay, and I know Brittany was off today. Uh, let's follow up with Brittany, make sure she's gotten that. And, you know. Okay, uh, anything else? Uh, no. All right. Um, I got one other thing. All right. For the Parks Department, I, um, Ray Jewel Park, the handicapped uh, parking spaces, they're very hard to read for, as far as handicap. So I'd like you to see them get repainted, possibly, or get across from getting them repainted, or put a sign up at the front of the, you know, in front of the parking spots. Jim, it's supposed to be marked when we did work. Nobody knows why they didn't come back to do it. Well, Karen can make those signs up. Did we pay them to do it? Huh? Did we pay them to do it? I believe that they paid them for that, and this is paid for everything. And, well, know, we need to check and, and see on that. And, I'll give it Brian in the morning. I know Karen, but Ken, of course, she can make the signs, but also I well, think we she should have the, signs over her anyway. Probably. Uh, she's also got the stencil to be right. able to, and that's what you're talking about. I think it would be probably a better better situation yeah. if you had well, yeah. Yeah. But they still need to be marked. Yeah, you know, I agree. So, so in the quote, to have, have uh, to my knowledge, when they did Waterford, Waterford they were supposed to do great job. After they paved that lot, the, the paintings yes. of the... I think so. I think everything's done. I don't, I don't know. know that, I don't recall that. Because well, I mean, I'll they, make sure I'll talk Yeah, it would be unusual that yeah. they would quote on, on mm -hmm. both of them. And I'm not saying that they didn't, but, you know, we need to pull that and check it and see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right, first thing, yeah. All right. Um, anything else? All right, well, we're going to move on to old business. Washburn Lane, as it turns out, the reducing the speed limit to 15 miles an hour can not be done just with a resolution of vote on fiscal court. We have to pass an ordinance to change an ordinance. So, um, this is, uh, uh, I'm not sure the ordinance number, uh, an ordinance establishing a 15 mile an hour speed limit on Washburn Lane. And um, it was evidently established at 35. I, I know we lowered it to 25. We lowered it to 25. Some years, so. okay. Yeah. And so now we're going to lower that to 15. So I'll need a motion. Motion to lower the speed limit on Washburn Lane to 15 miles per hour. Okay, and that's approving the first reading of the yes. ordinance. Okay. I'll second that. And call the roll on that, please. Sorry, Jerry Moody. <coughs> yeah, yes. Yes. Square. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Has anybody driven that at 15 miles an hour? Yes. Some part you can. Some part you yeah. can. 15 miles an hour. <laughs> well, and that was the uh, engineer's recommendation, too. It's mainly because of that vertical curve. <coughs> you, you know, you, you guys have heard me talk about Washburn Lane for the last three years. It's the worst road in my district, and I'm just trying to make it as safe as possible. So that's why I, I, I agree with the engineer's report that we lowered, because that is a cut through from Holstrasse over, over to 55, and people just come over that hill to fly it. And the uh, residents there are looking for some relief, and I think this is the only thing we can come up with for now. So. So we've got a motion and a second to approve the first reading of the ordinance. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverson? No. Jay Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. Here. Road bonding and development. This is our update, I guess. So I'll turn it over to the county attorney who's put a lot of time in on that. Do we need a motion for this? Uh, did we already do? 
first reading and then we... Is this an ordinance or... No, no. It's not, okay. I think this... Oh, I'm sorry. I sorry. think last meeting we, we, we voted to send it back That's to right. planning zone. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you wanted to see some the change, what was actually changed. I think that was sent out to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and Julie told me today the planning zone is in here. I just, I don't have that folder with me. But they have to hear it and then send it back to us. And okay. give our final. So we don't need to do anything tonight? I have some questions. And we do. That's what I do. Okay, on the uh, first question I have is in section 403. What, what page is that? Well, I, page 35 now. Yeah, I don't know what's in the back. Oh, okay. Because I did this separately where I could read it right. what the changes were. The section 403, section 6. Okay. Talks about the construction of the roads and the dimensions and things of that nature. However, in section 511, it says all county roads must have curbing. Wait a minute, 5? 511. 511. I don't, I'm, uh, section 511. We're in section 403. Oh, oh. Okay, now I understand. Let me get back there. Oh, okay. That's pretty much the last page of that. So, anyway, the last sentence in Section 511 says all residential county roads shall have curbing. Up here on 403, Section 6, it's also talking about the dimensions and construction of the roads. But it says nothing about having curbing. I think there's a set of rules of it related. One set on 511 is the city. But it says all residential county roads. And I know that was the intention in talking right. to the engineer. But it's not here that we're talking about the uh, street widths and setbacks and things of that nature. So I think it should yeah. maybe be yeah. in this Added section. Added under, under section 6? I believe so. I believe that would be the correct intent. Mm -hmm. Or just eliminate in 511 all kind of roads and curbs. Well, we can. Uh, uh, I think the uh, intention is I think we have it both places. Yeah. But I, I think that should specify all new county. Well, I, I think the engineer said that the curbing would be better for any new county road. Right. Yeah. And I agree. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm just saying it's it's not in there enough in that sense. Yeah. Because it's not in this section. It needs to be in section but, six. But, you know, or it's section four or three. Yeah. yeah. You would think if it if it's, if it was in one section, then it would be legal, yeah. even though it wasn't in another. But I, I do know that when it comes to say all county roads have curbing. Right, we're talking about inside subdivisions. Right. What's the residential identity? Oh, that's right. So this, is residential 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 residential. this is any new work, new subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it says all county roads, and I think it needs to specify new subdivision well, roads. Yeah, because we, we can't know, go back after the fact. We're not going to go out and put curbing on no the Washington Lane. Right. <laughs> you know, it'd be down to one lane. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We need to specify that so any new plat or you know that comes before the plane is only. I'm just I'm just saying that makes a bigger time. And I think we could just put in all roads shall have curb in that paragraph. Okay. All new roads. I just I just think yeah, that the these whatever are new subdivision rights anyway. But sure. Yeah, just so that it's clear that we're not talking about going back and doing existing county roads. We're talking about yeah. new yeah, built to roads. Both sections. You know, they need to know it when they're reading that. They need to know it when it's heard when they're reading yeah. all that other stuff. That's right. Yeah. You go to section 405, number one. Right. On the right column, it's for the first line there. It says street grades were feasible, shall not exceed the following. The maximum, as we can see, is eight percent. The next sentence says the minimum of the eight percent grade is mandatory. It doesn't make sense because you yeah because you just said the maximum is eight percent. The right the next sentence says it's the minimum of eight percent. You see what he's talking about? Jerry, Jim, so I don't know. Two K four. That's what we're all in this. Yeah, no, so we did good. Right, you know, one person can get all of us. No way. Okay, it's hard to check your work. I'm just going to put a question mark there and 
Yeah, well, you know, we could, we could strike the minimum eight 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 degrees mandatory and just leave the rest of the county road over eight must be reviewed and approved. You know, I mean that would be an easy fix. We should check the two three four to see why why is that even right? Yeah, just I mean, we talked about this. Somebody needs to talk to the engineer about yeah. it. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, it seems like. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to yeah, you. It looks to me like there's I'm not an engineer. All right. We don't know that. But there may be some meaning behind that. Sure. I don't know. It seems, seems like it would be free to know a common person. It looks like it conflicts with itself. It seems like if it was something like a maximum of 8% grade is. So that, that, that needs to be resolved. It would be nice to have the heritage. Well, before it goes back to. Planning its own week. We might be able to get these changes in before the hearing. Yeah, so they have clear. You know, I think the, the faster we get this thing done, the better we're going to be because there is some new developments in my district in post structure that's coming up. Two big ones. So, you know, and we want to make sure that they are under this new, these new guidelines. And that's correct. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, we don't want to rush you to put something No. This thing I saw was in section 417. Okay. The second paragraph talks about uh, plannings and screenings that will be part of the uh, plans for the subdivision. So it's, uh, you know, get a condition of approval for the final subdivision plan. So is that going to be bonded also? Because you know, just like when they say they're going to do the road a certain way, they're going to bond on that. But then we're saying, hey, I have these screenings and stuff. And if we're going to bond on they never do it. It's not happening. What exactly are we talking about? Well, second, no. second, second paragraph. This phase, because this plays last year. Yeah. Serious? Yeah. Laterals? Right away? Planning? Plannings and screenings? Is that what you're talking about? The yeah. plan for yeah. plannings and screening will be provided during the design phase and be a condition of approval of the final subdivision plan. And then there's something else to go with that. I mean, uh, what, are we going to bond everything for the subdivision? Like sewers, if they say there's going to be yes. a park or a playground? Yes. Go, but it doesn't really say it here. Uh, you know, we had a, a, a the schools here, I believe, uh, you know, when they put that subdivision on the house, it's going to be a clubhouse. And that was a promise to the people. Mm -hmm. It never happened. So is that going to, are we going to, are we going to really hope, you know, hold the developers to say, to do what they say they're going to do, or let just let them say stuff and not do it? So you know, overall, say throughout. be a pool or golf course, just like, you know, this other place out here was going to have a golf course. Mm -hmm. I think anything that's really in that, in that, in that development plan to start with should be fine. Period. We're just not in there. This is just only covering roads. And, you know, so if we're really going to say, hey, we're going to make sure these developments turn out the way to say, then, you know, then we really have to think about all these things when they come apart, you know, because the roads are a promise, you know, that sometimes has to be that the past. <coughs> things, you know, but if we don't have the approval of the whole development, should not something be done to make sure it happens that way. But, you know, it says that the plan for planning and screening will be provided during the de design phase and be a condition of approval for the final subdivision plan. Yeah, so it gets approved. That's terrific. They said they had a plan, but then they never did. That's what happened. That was supposed to be in there because I thought that that was disgusting. It said that was supposed to be in there. And I don't think there's anything there. They were in a clubhouse and they got to make it to responsible and they got to put in a bond. And I don't think it's not in there. You know, I think the bond, the bond was supposed to be for the roads. Well, well, the bond was supposed to be for the uh, for the infrastructure of the entire the entire subdivision. That that's electrical, uh, plumbing, the sewers, whatever that included. And I think this design phase right here is a, it's an additional approval of the final subdivision. I think it would automatically be. Well, but when you go back to section three thirteen, uh, number C, or letter C, and look at reduction of thirty bond, all it refers to is the road. It never refers to anything else. So there's never and never is it addressed in there. It Essentially, that's what this document is addressing is road, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't know whether it needs to be a 
addressed in this document or if there's some other guidance that planning and zoning has to, uh, has to have to, you know, whatever it is that they <coughs> say, oh yeah, I'm going to put in a clubhouse or I'm going to put in a playground or I'm going to do this or that. Right. Well, you say you're going to do that, then how do we uh, assure with, with the evidence of the bond, how do we assure that the developer is going to perform? So, and then, in the case that we do have to cash a bond and complete something, does that become the responsibility then of the county to maintain that clubhouse or pool or playground? Mm -hmm. Because, you, 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 mm -hmm. you know, just like the road, you know, as an example. Yeah. Anyway, it's things that are coming up as I go through this. Well, some would be turned over to a homeowners association. Sure. Um, common areas and that. Um, so we need to uh, address that with uh, the engineers and uh, possibly. I, think it, I mean, I think it reads like it's going to cover all improvements, but then they throw in that, you know, shall not be reduced to less than the estimated cost to complete into road construction. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, and no more than yeah. about fifty percent of the cost of the road construction. I mean, there's there anything be, else about. I wonder if, it, if, if, like on 417, if it could be added in there and subject to additional bonding or something. To well, I think okay. all the bonding stuff is happening in 313. Yeah. So we need to change 313 to make sure that the bonding, you know, encompasses, like Jim said, the utilities, uh, whether they're putting up these. Uh, Fences, you know, privacy, or, or, or you know, anything shrubs, that the developer poses, whether it be clubhouses or, or golf courses, or where that the bond would cover anything that they propose. Right. So would you? Yeah. Uh, I agree. I mean, it could be a retention bond, or it could be. It a, could be anything. Right. If, if if they if, when they present that proposal to planning and zoning, it says there's going to be a clubhouse, there's going to be a golf course then yes, all of that should be under the bonding to make sure that even if they don't do it, there will be enough bonding there that I don't know if it or not, but it's a performance bond. Yeah. It's a, it's a, um, it's it's a, a penalty if they don't. Anything that doesn't mean that the county is going to go in and build the playground they didn't build. And the, yeah. the, they're going to be penalized. It doesn't mean they have to. Yeah. So uh, next thing is in section 419, it talks about the placement of a 18 inch entrance pipe, mm -hmm. but then it's stricken out and there's no dimension given with we're on now. Section 419. What was it you're saying? Well, it's, it uh, includes the placement of an 18 inch entrance pipe that's stricken kind of road format. Section 419. Yeah. I'm looking at section 419. Placement of a 12 inch. Well, it says 18 and then it's stricken, but there's no dimension given. Under mm -hmm. building permits. Well, I'm, I'm that's a placement of a 12 inch wide point. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they got 12 inch wide. Okay. 12 yeah, foot deep wide. 12, 12 feet, feet wide, yeah. 4 inches deep. So. No, next line. Or it gives the, the oh, yes, yes, size of the including placement of it. Just, it's it's the the yeah, and it just says entrance pipe. It doesn't say what size it needs to be. It's going to be 12 foot deep, 4 inch deep, stone, foot measure, pad, it is. Entrance pipe. It doesn't say what the entrance pipe is. Is that what you're saying? Diameter. See, it's got an 18 inch strip that's stricken through. Oh, so you're looking at the change copy. Okay. Right. Well, and then it does go on to say, as, as directed by the kind of road form, that you want to leave something like that under one person's direction. Maybe we'd be better off to have a number in there as opposed to somebody's. Yeah. And Todd and Kit Cashworth can tell us, I'm sure there's a yeah. number that they're thinking in their mind. Well, you know, uh, you know, different, different places. This placement of an entrance pipe as directed by the county road form. So, the you know, the engineers are going to And, you know, different, different places may require different size. Right. Not, you know, yeah. not just one fits all. Right. One might be a 12 inch, the other one might be a 24 inch. Right. Depending on the 
And that way it gives discretion to Todd to decide, you know, or the road foreman to decide which one it leads. So well, we've all known this. We need to have a GK4 out here to answer. Well, they've already passed it here. So uh, my next thing is in section 505, number four. <clears throat> Five oh five. Five oh five number four. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh you're gonna read through this short from the second line it says uh, install sanitary sewers and connect the same. I believe that should be same. I know it's just a typo. Yeah. yeah. But I just want to make sure it wasn't mm -hmm. something that I wasn't some terminology I wasn't uh, picking up on. Okay. Um, section 510 talks, talks about stop order. It says in Article 7, Article 7, total resolution, what is Article 7? It talks about fees, variances, and penalties. It doesn't really say, or at least when I read it, I didn't see. They said they can keep on working if there was unnecessary hardship. But uh, really doesn't give me a clear understanding of uh, why the road foreman would be. Uh, Putting a stop work order on somebody. Well, if if the developer's not doing what he's re required to do, and the road foreman sees that, then yeah, I can see where he could put a stop work order on. Yeah, he doesn't have that ability to do on anything. Yeah, and that's why he wanted that in there. It says the developer will be charged with production charges if being necessary by the county road form as outlined in Article 7. Uh, so it doesn't really say. Uh, I, I just don't see where that section addresses where we would be charging the developer liquidation, liquidated damages. You got all that down? Um, no, I was just telling you more section seven. Right? Article seven. Where, where are you looking at that? Right. Page sixty down here in the right hand corner. Page six. Article seven. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it seems like Article seven is giving really all the power to the planning commission about making exceptions to the work. And this new stop work order obviously puts the road department and the county engineer as making the call. Something's not going to be solved tonight, but it needs to be looked at by, yeah. by somebody. I have just got a question mark by the section 700 to see section 510. Yeah. And then the section 608, 1B. Right, uh, certificate. About the city or county engineers certifying the subdivision as complied with one of the following alternatives. And one of those is a bond or certified check to be posted available to the city. That doesn't say anything That's about the county. But. Well, this is a certificate of the city or county engineer certifying that the subdivider has compiled, complied with the, one of the following alternatives. So evidently that's been changed. Yeah. But it's only saying the bond or certified check to be posted available to the city. Well, oh, I see. Oh, in yeah. section B, I see. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, 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 so if, if it said city back slash county. Right. So, okay. And I'm assuming that's the way it has been or is right now because that's not a change that, that's in there. There's definitely needs to be. So it should say city or county. Right. Yes. <coughs> Subject to the changes noted, uh, um, some of the changes. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's. So you'll get that out. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Wednesday afternoon, we received at the judge's office three bids, uh, one from Atlantic for uh, a, uh, they're calling it a custom truck, I assume it's a wheel coach, for a total of uh, 124.383. Pen Care provided two bids, and this is a, a this would be the first one's for a 2023 model truck. Uh, Care provided two bids, one for a 2023 model medics ambulance carrying a total of 106,630, and they provided one on a Gen T, which is a 2022 model, for 110,303. The uh, expected delivery date on the 2023 models were uh, for medics was November of uh, 2022, and I called the uh, guy from Atlantic, and he said on this uh, 2023 model, he, would, he felt like it would be the end of 2022 as well. The Gen T model 2022, uh, has already has uh, six or eight of those ordered, and they're going to sell them as demo models, and expected delivery date is sometime this month. We also have a bid out from the Type 1 ambulance that we did not, uh, we did not award our reject yet. So that will be kind of awesome. All three of these ambulances are with uh, very similar respect. As a matter of fact, within the three ambulances, there's a, a total of, I think, two inches of length difference and two inches of heavy difference between all three of them. So they're all very similar respect. All three of these are on a Econoline type chassis? Uh, yes, an E350 e Ford chassis right. gas engine with a 7.3 V8 gas engine. And the uh, the uh, four-wheel drive uh, Medex, that is a truck chassis with a yeah. truck body on it? That was on an F350 chassis, correct, right. with a uh, 
the four four wheel drive with the, the same engine, I believe. The same. I don't have that spec in front of me. The I think it was the seven point three gas also. Well, you know, I'll just give you my opinion on it. That's all it is. And I've talked to Chris about it. And we have four wheel drive ambulances now, and they're on the truck chassis. And <coughs> even though Brett's not going to vote to spend any ARPA money on it, I think we can spend ARPA money on these ambulances. And let me just give you a scenario, Jerry. If you were to go, you're a farmer, uh, you want to go buy a new tractor. You go over to Bloomfield, uh, big three tractor, and you say, I want this tractor because this is what I need. I need a four wheel drive tractor, <coughs> uh, so many horsepower, or whatever. This is what I need. And the salesman says, Well, hey, I've got this other tractor, it's got the same horsepower, but it's two wheel drive. And you say, well, that's not what I need. I know what I need because I'm the expert. I'm the farmer. Well, Chris is the expert here. And if Chris says we need a four-wheel drive ambulance, I believe we need a four-wheel drive ambulance. And I definitely believe it because your driveway that goes up to your house, if it's got ice or snow on it, a two-wheel drive ambulance would not go up your driveway. It's got ice on it. A well, but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, my opinion is that I don't think we need to, to lower our expectations here and go to a, a tunnel line van when we've got truck chassis uh, ambulances now. And it, it's $32,000 difference between the 156 uh, four wheel drive versus the 124 uh, line van. And I'm going to vote no, not because we don't need an ambulance, but because we do, but just because it's four wheel drive. Uh, we're for Jim, Jim, can I we're, say something? Sure. Okay. All the way through this process, up until tonight when I got <coughs> through, I thought everything was okay. We discussed it. He said we got by without four wheel drive, the climate yeah. change coming. Uh, we're trying to save money. I got the best bid. These bids started out a hell of a lot higher. And the only reason why these companies outbid is because Chris told them they had to get the price down. Now, I'm not no dummy. It was, yeah, this was a sealed bid. Let's so, let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. And, and I don't like people not telling me the truth. All the way through this, we agreed on I, everything. I still, I still, I still was there. wide open. Let me finish. Okay. I don't like being stabbed in the back. Period. Paragraph. Now you, you have hurt yourself with me real bad oh. because we was all the way through this together. I let me finish. finish. Let me finish. Okay. All right. We got a, we got a bid of ten, nine, five from Atlantic. All right. We got a, Atlantic built. A million or two dollar facility over at Shelbyville to get these things serviced. All right, is what we're doing. We're cutting them out for a company that's not as big, cannot give service. If we have trouble with it, where does it have to go back to? Uh, the Ford Service Center. Uh, but but I'm, I'm going to address something real fast uh, since I was just accused uh, and. The gentleman back here is our pin care rep, and he can tell you that I did not discuss any prices with him before he sent these bids. Uh, as a matter of fact, he called me Wednesday after we opened the bids, and I didn't discuss prices with him. I made him aware that we had a bid from Atlantic, and Atlantic is aware that we had two bids from pin care. That is the most discussion I've had with any handbook dealer uh, since day one, since we started this. Uh, and I've made it clear to everybody that we got to. All of our patients before we had four wheel drive, but four wheel drive is an advantage to us. Yes. And we'll still, if we get four wheel drive this time, or we don't, we're still going to get to our patients. We're at a point to where we've got to buy an ambulance. That's just, uh, yes. there was a day last week we were down to one ambulance because we got two aging ambulances that were in the shop. Yes. So, and we, we also discussed, you know, I said, 
Well, if we go with two wheel drive this time, mm -hmm. then the next one will go to a four wheel drive. And I and, I, and I'm still on board with that. I sent a recommendation in based on well, based on the a two wheel drive on this one and a four wheel drive. We're on trying this to one. hold the price down because we're trying to take and build a substation. The response time is what we're after. Right. Mm -hmm. We've got the worst response time. Well, you're in any county around here. You and everybody has you're, said, you're, let you're me finish. Price on on just a this second. Ambulance well, because you want to build a substation and use the difference of the money. Partially, yes. Yep. We're trying to hold the cost down. We can we can use the ARPA money to buy the settlements. There's no doubt in my mind. I've done re enough research on it to know that we can do that as long as we add it to our fleet. Right. Now, whether it's 156 or whether it's 124. So why do we want to save money on this ambulance and go with a two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive? We can do whatever y'all want to do, but I'm telling you, we've got an ambulance set back over there now that they took parts of their service truck and put it on our ambulance, and when the parts come in, then they're going to take the old parts off. And it's what y'all are doing. Y'all are standing them in the back. Y'all have no backbone. You have no business here. being here. You're not smart enough. Who are we standing <laughs> in the back? Everybody. Who? I mean, who are That's that company. You what you, you what company are you talking about? I don't Atlantic. Know. Who's Atlantic? Who is it? I don't understand. The biggest ambulance company. Uh, Atlantic, Atlantic is the uh, service center that is uh, that. Uh, they are attached to one of the largest ambulance manufacturers, the uh, the Rev Group. So they do. Uh, it's a service center that opened in Shelbyville. They do uh, work strictly on emergency vehicles. They uh, recently just fixed Med Two, and uh, we sent it there for. They had an oil pan leak and a. Uh, what was that Joe talking? Leak around the valve. Oh, all valve gas. And. Uh, what they discovered was when it uh, when that oil leaked and got into something, it also uh, the pollution the the uh, that were regions they had to pull some parts off of their service truck to fix that, and they're going to once those because they have those parts on back of the floor, once those parts come in, they're going to. Uh, to pull our ambulance back over the new parts on it, to take parts. So you see this Atlantic could not fix the ambulance, they had to take parts off of their own they service could, vehicles. They couldn't fix it because they, they, there was no parts available. They fixed the uh, valve cover thing on the top and they fixed the oil pan. But what had happened when the whatever caused the leak allowed a lot of that to get into the region system. So it's called. what is the advantage of going with Atlantic versus not going with Atlantic if they can't get the parts anyway? Well, they took parts off their own vehicle and put on ours, so we'd be back in service. Yeah. Who we makes the four-wheel drive medics? That is the uh, medics makes that. They're in Park. Oh, vehicle. medics, okay. Um, Any issues with getting service on a vehicle like that? We've always, up until Atlantic opened, sent our trucks uh, uh, to Allstate Ford. Is, uh, who did our diesel work before this? That's right. Yeah. Uh, anything Gary could handle back when, when he was still here. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> what if the ambulance part gets um, You know, the non Ford part. I've not had to deal with that ever yet. So it's never happened? No. Uh, we, the small things like that. Uh, if we get like a, a door handle that's not going, we've got a company to order that from and we put it in in house. We've never had, knock on wood, like a, like I say, a major electrical issue or something like that. We haven't ran into that yet. Uh, let's see what happened. If I remember correctly, the other analyst companies make the provision that if you have to bring it back for service, they give you a longer analyst. Is that correct? Am I remembering that right? Because I've heard that before. Seems like I remember. We had a loaner ambulance on one of those uh, remounts that we did for a while because something was not right with that and had to go back to Georgia. Yeah. That's my only experience with a loaner ambulance. And also when we did the remounts in the past, they would provide a loaner ambulance while they were working on remounting. So we did have to send somebody, something back to want to work on a remount. Yes. Okay. And I can't, I can't recall what that was. It was a... Uh, the first one of the first remounts we did, uh, 
and I can't recall it. So that would have been like 2013 or 14. We had to send something back. I can't recall what that was. But they Is that where our uh, ambulance was sitting on their lot and we had to that was, and Yeah, that was the first remount we gave them. That was the first. Uh, mm -hmm. So that company that had our ambulance ready to get back, we did two other ambulances that those in the past. Uh, so that was the same. Yeah. But, so I can't speak to if, like, something in the patient compartment fails because we've not had to really deal with that. Other than that one time on the remount? Yes, and I can't recall what hint problem that was. That might have been some electrical stuff from the remount, but I can't recall. Um, but, you know, my only concern here is the four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive, period. I mean, you know, I think if we go with the, the two-wheel drive, we're going to have, we could have problems with any of them. There's, there's, you know, I mean, it, it could happen. Uh, we could have a problem with the four-wheel drive. We're going to, we'll deal with that. But the issue that I have is the four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive. And, and I, you know, I think we need the four-wheel drive. We got two down there. And we need to continue on with what we got. Well, half the fleet, the way we had taught it, half the fleet would be four-wheel drive. We need to continue on with four-wheel drive the entire fleet. I just want to ask you a question. Has something changed with our phone? Because when Danielle was here, she you specifically can, said we couldn't use it for an ambulance. Well, so it's about the way that we wanted to buy You could use it to replace an ambulance. You could use it to expand your fleet. Right. Right. So I think that's so, what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, according to, to, to Danielle Kipta, we can add to the fleet with ARPA money, uh, and we have to show cause for that. Uh, so we can like track new runs and because Jerry and I worked on something else for track and runs for also. Uh, but and, and like I said, and, and this whole court city, I mean, I, I'm a fan of four wheel drive. Uh, and Jerry and I talked and we're and we're looking at four wheel drive back down the road. Right now I'm a fan of getting an ambulance here that's reliable. Uh, we were at literally last week, I think it was last week. Down to one ambulance for about four or five hours, and that's when Atlantic took uh, some parts off their service truck to get us that one back they had in the shop. Uh, we had one that uh, we had one ambulance that blew a um, wheel bearing in the rear, real shield. shield, and then we had an ambulance that's got the liquid ride uh, suspension that the motor for the uh, pump of the hydraulic fluid has gone bad on so it's at it's at, at the land now we're trying to get the part in these are being uh, regularly maintained by all yes sir okay. uh, we do that we do the check every monday on them uh, with the little spreadsheet thing okay. and then we track and daughtry does all the uh, normal stuff like oil check. and like daughtry did that real 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 wheel bearing uh and he got it done pretty quick but as a matter of the day it went bad he didn't have a spot to get it so it had to wait a day to get over. Let me ask you this, what kind of delivery time are you talking about on a four-wheel drive versus a two-wheel drive? I, I can't answer that because we didn't put out any more bids for that. So regardless of whether it's two-wheel drive or four, we need to get something what, over. Was there, on that four-wheel drive medics, was there a delivery date on that That's proposal? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't that have came that. in a couple, couple of meetings ago. Yeah, I don't have that proposal with me because, um, these are the ones we just got. Now, on four wheel drive, was you pricing a three fi F350? Three, 350 with F350. Yeah, and the way I understand, in your own words, what you told me, to get a four wheel drive. It might have been a 450, you're right. It was a, it's a 450. No, it's a 350. It is 450. It's a 450. Yeah, he's the tank cab representative. That's what I remember. It was a 450. It was a 450. Yes, yes. 450 frame. You're right, that is correct. All you can get it on a 350, but you have to get a diesel engine. Correct. Yes. What we want. And also, now on this 450, you correct me if I'm wrong, because I may have misunderstood, but that's the one that's got that special fluid in the back that we set up and down. That's any of... To my knowledge, uh, that's any of any more. That's any of like these truck type ambulances, any, any of like F50 or whatever, whatever Chevy 
uh, would be the silver, like a Silverado front end. All of the truck ones that I know of have that liquid rod suspension. And you have that now? We have them on two. Well, right that, that, that didn't mean they're all going to break. Med one and med two. Uh, med one and med two both have. You have to pay that extra expense. The reason why they have that back here is because it rides too damn rough on the truck chassis. Well, that's that's and part of the. And you go to a Chevrolet full wheel drive in a thirty five hundred and not have that. I, that. I can't answer that. Uh, Mike probably could. Can we do a Chevy truck without liquid rod? Are you a Ford truck? Liquid, liquid spring suspension is standard on a F450 and F550. I don't know if it's standard on a Chevy, but I'm sure that it's available. It probably is standard. I may call that something different. Uh, I don't know if that would be a 3500 in terms of the model. Uh, we sell nine and a half trucks that we sell are Ford. Uh, Dodge is probably more uh, in the number two slot. As far as popularity in the five states that we run, uh, Chevy, I don't have as much experience with, but I can get information. And if, <coughs> if you want a Chevy chassis with four wheel drive and liquid spring suspension and it exists, we certainly have access to that as, as your option. Well, we need to, we need to get an ambulance order. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now, Jerry, has, Jerry has another bid from, from... That was not in part of the sealed bid. I did not, get, not, I, I did not get that. So I came in not Because it was not part of the sealed bid. You cannot... Uh, because I had purchased... We had a had sealed a bid out. We have to consider the sealed bid. If they had submitted that as part of a sealed bid, then we could consider it. Because it is. we went around the company rep over here. I get that, but we we, have, we are required to do competitive bidding. We did that through a sealed bid. Now, yeah, I, I understand. I mean, you know, the, the, that you've been able to negotiate something on, a, I think it might have been a demo or something. No, it was not a demo. Well, whatever. If, if they, you know, why didn't they submit it as part of the sealed bid? Because I went direct to the guys in charge. He's in West Virginia. Okay, it has to do with dealerships and right. Okay, and, and it's still the deal is still on. He said I can't explain that to the auditors. I cannot explain that to, to the auditors sure. on a hundred plus thousand dollar vehicle. I thought in the past, <clears throat> and, and I could be wrong on this, but I thought I remember in the past that if you did seal bids. And you could negotiate a better price on your own in the sealed bids than you could do that. No. That's only within the participants of the sealed bid. And that would be if they all came in over what, whatever you had collected and anticipated to enter into a negotiation. You need to enter into a negotiation with the, the participants of the sealed bid. Atlantic no. no. Atlantic sent us a sealed bid. And this is the same company that you they did. negotiated a better price with. Right. But it was not part of the sealed bid. That's correct. The company's the same, but it's outside the sealed bid. I mean, I know on a road project, we did sealed bids, and I had a contractor come in. Bids were supposed to be opened at 3 o'clock. They came in like, I don't know, three minutes late. I can't mm -hmm. consider it. I cannot consider it. So, you know, I mean, it, we, we would be subject to a lawsuit. I can tell you that if I had. Right. Um, so the, the fact is, we put this out for bid, and we can reject all the bids and rebid it, or we can opt to, um, you know, to award it to um, one or the other. My, my question, you know, when you look at if it's strictly a, a cost savings, and, and look, I, I want to buy things competitively, not like I want to just go out there and blow a bunch of money needlessly. But you're looking at an ambulance that expected life is what, 10 years at least, uh, to chance and try to save, you know, $40,000, $45,000, is it? Or, 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 I just, I, I think that's the wrong place to try to, to cut. I, I think that, you know, that, and I'm, I, I know Chris, I, 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 I 
beg you, Jerry, not to go off on Chris and, and feel like anybody's stabbing you in the back. We're having some good, honest discussion here is what we're doing. But and, look, I'm not through talking, please. Okay? So, you know, I think what we need to do is the, the concern that Chris has and that I have, we all should have, is that do we have the adequate equipment that EMS needs? You know, and if EMS, uh, you know, if the, if the guy digging the ditch tells me he needs a particular kind of shovel, I'm not going to go out there and presume that he can get by with a hole. You know, so, I mean, I, I just think that these are the people that are using the equipment. They've made a recommendation. I know Chris is feeling, at this point, he doesn't care whether it's a two-wheel or a four-wheel. He'd prefer to have the four-wheel drive. He doesn't care at this point. He just wants to get an ambulance. And if we got a you know, uh, 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 script, and, 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 and I, I just don't think that, 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 that this is the place to try to cut a corner and go to a two-wheel drive versus a four-wheel drive, but that's just my opinion. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, go with the four-wheel drive medics for $156,000. We've got a motion. We've got a motion. I'm going to second the motion as a judge because I think we need to discuss this. Okay. Maybe there's no more discussion to be had. If that's the case, call the roll. Well, but I do have it. Yeah. I, I think what you said is, is exactly right. Chris knows what he needs. He, he is the expert. He's been here since 2004. He knows he's bought two ambulances since he's been chief. Is that correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> he knows what, and both of those have been four-wheel drive. Now, uh, the six of us sit up here and say, this is what you need, Chris. But Chris says, no, this is what I need. But we're the deciding vote. Is that right? No. The expert in this, just like the tractor I'm talk, telling you about, Jerry, if you went to buy a tractor and you wanted a four-wheel drive, you wouldn't let a salesman talk you into a two-wheel drive when you knew you needed a four-wheel drive to do what you needed to do. And why are we sitting here telling Chris this is what he needs? He's telling us this is what I need. So that was my motion to do that. I, I know this man, and I'm looking at his face right now, and I know what he's thinking. Oh, hell, here I am. I got, I'm on the bad side of Jerry. He didn't want to be on the bad side of Jerry or Jim or Tim or anybody. No, okay. He's got a job to do. No, okay. I'll tell you that's what he needs to. That's what he's trying right to do. Right now, I'm thinking that I just. Job. Right now, I'm thinking and and I came to Fry Sport every year and said, "Hey, we need to replace an ambulance." And we're to the point that uh, needing to replace an ambulance has become um, <coughs> almost to an emergent level. I've been forthcoming with with my support for four wheel drive ambulance. I've also been forthcoming that before we had four-wheel drive, we still got 12 patients. And I'm at the point tonight that I just need an ambulance. If it, if it means we order the, the cheapest one on these bids, then so be it. My problem with the cheapest one on these bids is it doesn't come here until this time of next year. Uh, and I don't know that, that at least one of our ambulances is going to make it to this time of next year. I'm not trying to scare anybody. It's just, uh, and as long as I've been working here, we've never had a day where we were down to one ambulance. And granted, it was kind of some weird stuff that will probably never happen again. But we've got two ambulances that have age on them. We, we don't, you don't drive the ambulance like it's a your Sunday morning going to church call. They sit, in a, they sit in a bay for a couple hours and they get called to some have a heart attack or whatever, and they're driving pretty hard to get there. And sometimes they get drove regular to the hospital, sometimes they get drove just as hard in the hospital, depending on the situation. So, uh, and we got two that are approaching, if they don't have it already, 200,000 miles on, on, this, on these ambulances. So, I'm at the point, like, if I've got to get here and beg to buy an ambulance, I would beg somebody to buy an ambulance. Because that's the point where I, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, Shouldn't be anyway. I'm assuming that you just stopped on the four-wheel drive because 
you determined that we were not going to get on the four wheel drive? Right. You, that doesn't seem like the appetite of the court at the time for the four wheel drive. And uh, Jerry and I have been working on some other things, which is probably in the long run. And we can circle back around the four wheel drive if we can get some other things done. Which I believe he's going to talk about a little bit. The other, the other point I'm making is we don't even, we don't know when we can get the four wheel drive in. I do not. I mean, so you know, that's correct. It could be this time next year could, or later. It could be that. So, simply because we and, didn't we didn't pursue that. So yeah. So I know, know the point now. Well, this is what we've been pursuing for the last month and a half, two months. That like I'm, I'm to the point. I couldn't. So I couldn't. I couldn't say that we need to bid on a four wheel drive because we don't know what we're going to. I, I, I agree with that. And, and, and we are going to use our money. Is that correct? I mean, if we, if it, yes, I mean, we can use our money for this. I think we, we've got, you know, we, we, we could be about with not using our money. We've got it. We've got it in, in the in the budget to use uh, to use general funds. General funds. Right. I understand. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it would be nice if we. You know, uh, at these delivery dates, you know, uh, of any of these, you know, uh, those are just delivery dates as we have we bought the police vehicles and you know they were supposed to be delivered in the, in the fall of such and such and they didn't get for six months transit so kept getting none, pushed back and back and back none of these delivery dates are set in stone so you know we can't take that as as a that's what's going to happen whether it be november of 2022 or spring of 2022 you know that may be just a little way that that company says oh, i might push my bid up a little bit if i can get to the spring of 2022 instead of the fall of 2022 who knows you know there's a lot of stuff going on that we don't know about so square those delivery dates are just that's what they are they're just they're out there square move was the bid for a two-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive well we had a drive medics for no, 56 no, no, no. no we, we had a bid we had a previous drive. bid for a four-wheel drive then we came back and bid the two-wheel drive Okay, so the sealed bid that just went out there by responding to this for two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive. So they had a sealed bid for the four-wheel drive. The bid that, the bid that we but just opened was for that. Was for that we neither. Yeah, so we got two different sets of bids. We've got two sealed bids, basically. Yeah, two we did. Sealed bids. We did sealed bid several months ago, right after the start of the fiscal year for uh, the ambulance that we put in the budget. And we only got one bid, so you guys didn't accept or reject that. And then... Uh, we did what we really got serious about. Not yes. Us. And we put, and we said, all right, we're ready. Here, everybody bid this. It was for two more We put out a bid for, well, we, they, well no, we, we set out the bid again for the pipe one and they get in more bids. And then uh, we put out the bid for the type three. When you say it's sent out, what does that mean? Is that we mean we publicly publish it. In the Spencer Hyper? Yes. Okay. And, uh, we publish it, and most analysts probably have people that research who's got bids out. Um, we, uh, and then Squire Moody got the uh, quote from uh, Atlantic, and we, he came over and we looked at the analysts we have, it's the same, kind of the same size as that, and him and I both agreed we can make it work. And so we put out our bids for, that type three ambulance, which was the two wheel drive on the van chassis. And uh, all three of those bids came back with pretty much the same size truck as the net four that we have. Uh, and the only thing is that Atlantic didn't bid on the sealed bid what what they told us on the paper. It, it, it needs less three sealed bids that we had for the 350 two-wheel drives. We did not specify four-wheel drive. No, no those three bids, right? Well, uh, I, I don't know that even anybody makes a, a comma line. Or the, I know the Chevy and the Ford do not come in because we called it. We did call and check. We thought there was a chance that Chevy could do four-wheel drive in the van. And as of right now, that's not an option. Uh, and we have discussed, Jerry and I, after doing this project, further down the road, looking at going back to a four-wheel drive truck. Right now, we're just trying to get a truck and trying to work on getting the, the second station built 
and trying to keep some cost down. Well, you know, the second station bill, it, this is, we haven't even talked about that. Yeah, we haven't talked about that yet, so. We, we, this, we haven't discussed that at all. So, you know, we're discussing analysts. Now, whether we save money for it, whatever project he's got going, I don't know, but this is what we're looking at right now. When do you anticipate that we may, may need a, another ambulance once we purchase a, a new one now? There's one thing to remember, and the ambulance company will tell you this if they don't tell you the truth. A $110,000 ambulance would be the same damn thing as far as saving a person's life as a hundred and fifty, a two hundred, or a two hundred. If you can get to the house where he's at. How many snow days did we have last year? Jim? All right, hold on just a second. I believe Squire Brewer has the floor right here. Yeah, I mean, I you answer that question. Um, I mean, what, what is your projection date? What are you looking at? Possibility. Well, we've kind of historically dug ourselves into a hole because we've never had our fleet on a uh, on a schedule thing. So right now, I have a 2013 and a 2014, and I have a 2017 and a 2018. What I would love to see, whether I'm still in my position or I'm retired and somebody else is here, say we get a 2022 model. Retired. I can go in February 2030. <laughs> uh, if we get a 2022 model, uh, then I, I think... Uh, We've got to eventually start looking down the road and say that we're going to buy an ambulance every odd year or every even year. And in my brain, if we keep a fleet of four, that makes the oldest ambulance eight years old. If we, keep a, if we extend our fleet to five, it makes the oldest ambulance always ten years old. So we're, they're getting, because right now at about ten years, or eight or ten years, we're getting over that 200,000 mark. And I've never ran a gas ambulance. I'm, uh, I see people in their gas trucks getting two or three hundred thousand miles, but I can't speak on with us making a change to gas. Uh, but I have talked to some well, ambulance directors. Well, you've got a lot of idle time. Yeah, I've talked to some ambulance directors that have gas, and they, their biggest thing is if 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 they got to replace an engine, it's half the price of replacing a diesel engine, so they're cool. And they all seem to be happy with the performance they're getting with gas and the power they're getting with gas. So. But I don't have experience with that level. But I do have experience with this that we've got to get this fleet on a rotation so that we're not behind. Uh, and I believe Mike was on the court when he did that last time. Yeah, that ambulances were in bad shape. And we talked about it at that time. We talked about that time. And we yeah. talked about it with the previous court. It was getting some traction. But uh, it's going to be something we look down the road. But, I mean, there, an ambulance means a toolbox. So I want to put good stuff inside my toolbox. And I don't care if the toolbox says cobalt or hold the freight or snap on, we need to have good tools in. So if we can buy a, a decent ambulance that we know is going to last us and be reliable, whether it's a medics or whether it's a gym key or whether it's uh, this custom wheel coach, I think we're in the right market. We're not looking at St. Matthews and J. Town and Front Creek type trucks. They're buying two or three hundred thousand dollar ambulances. I'd rather see us spend the money to put equipment in the ambulance and just have something that's reliable and we know it's going to work. So what we're at now is we've got an aging fleet with two of those trucks. So the type I, one medics ambulance that's in the motion right now, did it have an expiration date on this price? Thank you. Okay. Do you expect the uh, burden on our EMS services over the next year, five years, or ten years to increase, stay about the same, or decrease? I can't. I can't 100 percent answer that. I expect as the county continues to grow, the need for more for more personnel and the need for uh, us having more runs, just as the population grows. I mean. Uh, it's 10, not going to decrease. Yeah, in so 10 years. We, we're in a position now, we need another, another ambulance, and we need to make a decision. I mean, I can tell you right now that whatever we get, we're going to need to add to the fleet. We can't just replace because we're at the point, and we're talking about it here, that we need to add at least a 12-hour truck because we're out of we're out of ambulances in the county almost every day. It was out again this afternoon. 
So we're going to have to... We've been on that cusp of needing another crew yes. for uh, a few years now. So, um, so we can't just... I feel like with, if we have three staff ambulances a day, it would be unrealistic just to keep one in the garage, uh, just for instance, like last week. So whatever we get, we'll need to move Med 3, which we know has been kind of uh, problematic, to like a backline truck and run the, the whatever we get and the other three we have is the frontline trucks. But um, we're still going to need to um, keep that as an auxiliary piece. And the problem we run into is if we keep it, it's got to be licensed by the state, so it's got to be equipped all the time. So, and I think when Jerry and I first started discussing making the move to this style ambulance, is that we can um, do this a little cheaper, and because we know if we keep it as a fifth, if we get a fifth truck, there's some equipment we also got to buy to put on it. Um, and depending on which route we go, just for the cot and the load system and the stair chair, which comes from Striker, we can either go with 25,000 or, or 28, I got the quotes, 28,000, 28, or and that's if we don't, if we don't put by the power load, if we just put the performance load, our 40, what it's still 40, uh, 45,000 if we go back with power load. And then we still got to buy a heart monitor and a CPO device. And the rest of the stuff we have in stock, we have a couple of other small things. But the rest of the stuff is just the small supplies. But this. $155,000 for ambulance, you're going to get around two and a quarter to two and a half. But this $156,000 four wheel drive, that is basically the low, low end of that vehicle. I mean, it could go up to $300,000 you put all the bells and whistles on it. It can, it can, can as we spec a, a fairly basic truck, and it's not very large in size. Um, it's uh, about the smallest box that goes onto a truck chassis. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay, we've got a uh, we've got a lot of good discussion here. Um, we've got a motion on the floor, and if everybody's ready, we'll decide on how to we'll use general funds. <coughs> what we budgeted is general funds. Okay. And I thought I, I, I reserve the right to be able to use ARPA funds if they're freed up and we don't have a problem using ARPA funds with U.S. Treasury. But, uh, I can tell you right now, as far as Beaverson, we're not going to be sending the ARPA funds back. So. How much did we budget in the budget for New Yorkers? So we we budgeted in our general fund mm -hmm. to purchase that. So yeah. let's do it that way, and then if the ARPA money comes available, then we could do it, and or not. But so something that we have counted on, but that ARPA money pay for that, and we got the money invested for for it. We should not take that money. And Chris and I discussed, and that would be the money to build the new station. And it's a hell of a lot more important to get the new station and get this response time cut in half for those people out there. And at least spend $155,000 for an ambulance if you're going to spend another seventy-five dollars at least on it to get it ready to make a run. Jerry, let me just say that this new station you're talking about, we don't know what you're talking about. That it's not been on the table. Nobody discussed it except here. So that's well, not, not pretty much out of the Okay, but well, we're, right we're getting way off of what, what well, this, 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 this is not pertaining to the motion that's on the table. And we've talked about this. We've talked about it. I think it's time to have a, a, yeah. a roll call on the motion that's on the table, and then we're going to go from there. So if the clerk would please call the roll. Squire Brewer. Yes. Squire Mike Moody. No. Squire Peterson. Yes. Judge Riley. Yes. Squire Travis. Yes. Squire Jerry Moody. No. 
motion passes. Is that bid in the packet? Solved no, it's minutes? it's from a previous. It's meeting. from a previous meeting. Would there we, be a way we will get that, that for you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Chris, can you make sure and do that before you leave? Uh, I'll ask, uh, I believe Brittany has a question. Oh, okay, yeah. Because it's still there that came in over there. Let's hope she's back in tomorrow. So I'll, I'll be in the office tomorrow. Okay, so that uh, that passes and we're going to move on. Uh, uh, next is uh, new business architectural services for ambulance farm located at Waterford Park. Do we need to uh, advertise? Uh, we're going to take a, a two and a half minute break. Yeah.
Yes, you are. How much better to have a long drive is? tracking the runs and I broke the county down into uh, basically areas, regions, and uh, uh, Waterford, uh, for, first we were offered some land in Waterford, we went and looked at it and really didn't think that the way it lay, it was going to cost a lot more than we, than we originally thought to get like grade work and get access to it and some other stuff. And then uh, someone brought up the we own a piece of flat land right there at the park. And uh, Jerry, Jerry went and looked at that. It's a great location, I think. Uh, Mount Washington is growing toward us every day. And that when, we tra when I track the runs, uh, Taylorsville and Elk Creek are by far the busiest area. Uh, but if once I put, say, King's Church, Whitfield Lane, Dogwood Circle in with the Waterford area, which a truck out there is going to have a lot of access to. That is by far our, uh, sec our third leading area that we're making runs. Uh, went out and drove around the county. Uh, I, I started at the red light from the high school and went several different directions seeing how much response time we could cut off. And that was just driving normal speed. It was like that speed, like not like code three. But, um, it took from that red light at the high school, uh, it was almost eight minutes to get just to where the Waterford Firehouse is. When I drove other directions, like from, from that same red light to where Overlook Road and Bloomfield Road meet was six minutes, six minutes to the, to the firehouse at Justin Boulevard. So um, wherever we go, we're going to cut 
at least six to eight minutes off of a response time. Uh, right now I'm having a hard time in my head justifying going toward Mount Eden or toward Ashes Creek just because we don't have call water yet. Uh, so, and we have looked and we've, we've got a map where we've sort of started talking about a 5, 10, 15 year plan on where to put some additional stations as the county grows. And it may be something we need to form a larger committee because this is like a project that, that Jerry and I have taken on. Uh, so maybe to get a committee and talk about where we want to take this down the road. But right now with the growth coming that way and with the access Waterford gives to even getting back to Elk Creek going across Plum Ridge or coming back into Taylorsville, I feel like it's a really good location. Uh, Wilsonville would be my second choice because Right now, if we went into Elk Creek, it's kind of putting the Taylorsville station right next to another Amber station. So if we, when we eventually go that way, we're going to have to go further north, more toward the county line. But uh, but we already have the land in Waterford, and it's uh, just based off the numbers we're seeing since we started tracking the runs. Uh, it's it's definitely a solid location. So. Uh, Numbers that we can look at. I mean, do you I've got. I, I stopped at the station and took a picture of my whiteboard before I came here. Uh, <laughs> I'd be happy to put this in, in, in more writing and let you guys know. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we don't know how many runs. We don't. We, we can't base this information off of anything but what you're telling us. Yes. <laughs> And, and I can go through our active knowledge one system and go back as far as we want to track. So if you want to go back a year, I can go back and pull the address of every one for Well, I would like to see a five-year run. I mean, because the last two years are probably not going to be a good indicator because of COVID. Well, well the five, let, let me say this. If, fast, the five year, let me say this, if I may. We're, we're right. talking about uh, trying to obtain architectural services. Mm -hmm. And in my conversations with Chris, is it doesn't make any difference whether we put that in Walker Park or Wilsonville or out in Ashes Creek. Or my, my or is we're going to, the plan would be to use the same right, architectural yeah, it's the plan. Once drawings we have, and, and once specifications. We, once, we, once we buy the plans, there are. So if we decide to use the plans and put a, uh, an ambulance station on every corner in the county, they can all be uniform because we have the plan. So once we have the plans, uh, and what we're looking at is it's, it's a basic stick frame. It's kind of like a one-car garage with an apartment attached to it. So we went and measured um, Med 2, which is our largest ambulance, because we down the road and we seem to get bigger. Uh, so it is, the, the footprint on it is, is 40 wide and 32 deep. And that gives us room for a 20 by 32 ambulance bay and a 20 by 32 living area, which is two bedrooms, a shower with, with a, a bathroom with a shower, and like an open area, like a living room, kitchen, combined type thing. And it'd be plenty of room for for, uh, for one ambulance crew to be at. And so it's uh, tried to cut the station down as small as we could get it. I thought we could cut it, cut it down to 20 by 30, but when we measured that ambulance, uh, it's the bay we have now is 32 deep and it goes just enough room to walk around that truck. So, uh, the first so thing we've got to have is a plan and uh, the specs and which we can get some cost estimates. We, we've got a rough drawing so we can give that to, the, to whoever does it and they can make it right. Cause, you know. so all we're asking for tonight is approval to advertise or request for proposals can, can for the architect. Can Kip be involved in this? I mean, I'm sorry? Is Kip, can Kip be involved in this? I don't think they provide architectural. They couldn't, uh, couldn't get you information for that, huh? No, I mean, they're not qualified to bid or to, they're not qualified to submit to a proposal. I mean, you know, we need architects. So, my question is, you know, is is this necessary? I mean, what, what, what statistics do you use that now is the time that we need to start doing this? Uh, uh, it's 
based on the fact that uh, that right now every day we don't have our trucks that are all out of the county. Uh, that's been that's been an issue that just is getting more and more of an issue. Uh, so we don't have the space in the current station. Uh, and at that point, once we, if we put on a third truck, I, I think it would be a poor decision to keep all three trucks right in Taylorsville. Um, my concern is response times. Uh, some areas we just have a very poor response time just based on where our ambulances are at. Um, my, what I would love to see before uh, my time ends here is that we get this one done and look at one, like I said, in Wilsonville and move, then move a truck out of Taylorsville to the Wilsonville area where we know we're also making a large amount of runs. Well, we're definitely going to need more crew. Yes. Well, you know, it, it seems like to me that none of this ever came out until Scott offered to donate a piece uh, of land. And no, all the judge the judge and I have had multiple conversations but, uh, about uh, the need for yeah. another But we always talked about adding on to the firehouse because firehouses were built to add on to, but yet, you know, we know that's probably not gonna happen because we are that was our tax uh, that was our uh, our first stop when we when we, when we started this little adventure was at the firehouse. We sat in the conference room with the Chief Nation and the Italian Chief Saturday. And um, he he agreed that we need more stations, outstations, and he was not fond of putting in the firehouse. Uh, we're dealing with some other issues with the fire department related to ISO, which sets all of our fire insurance tax stuff. So they're looking like they're probably going to have to add on to their stations just to increase apparatus placement some of these outstations so that we keep a realistic ISO number to keep all of our insurance things. Is, is it feasible, is feasible to add a, a separate structure like we're talking about here all on the fire department property where we could use the same they, entrance or the same septic system? I don't feel like, just in our conversation, uh, and Jerry correct me if I'm wrong, I don't feel like the fire department has an appetite for that. I don't they feel like I don't feel like it was very well accepted. First thing you managers need to do, the ones that's not in the north end of the county, go out and talk to your people. Do you mind waiting 35 or 40 minutes for an ambulance? Now, what's the most important? To put up lights for an all field down there or to get this response time cut in half? And we had our money worked out and to you come up with this four wheel drive and had to have that. So that's due to our plans. Yeah. And we could get along a lot better and get things done if y'all would leave me and Chris alone and listen to what we say. Just like two weeks ago we sat in here and y'all would not listen to an engineer that told you to close the road, block it off. Oh no, we can't. And y'all would not listen to the man. I can't believe this. You need to get your heads out of your rear end. Now y'all sit here all these years and never done a damn thing. And we could I'm not gonna this. sit here and, and be talked to that way. Well then leave. <laughs> I don't care. But I'm gonna say well, what I, I think. Mean, maybe I just will leave. Okay. Fuck this place. Uh thank you. That language is not gonna be acceptable, but I would prefer that you stay. That's why I'm gonna leave for a moment. Okay. I, you know, the, the, look, the whole attitude here is not it's this is not necessary. It's not necessary. Y'all do what you want to do. I need a motion to, to advertise a request for proposals to design an ambulance barn. And uh, does anybody want to make that motion? I'll make the motion. You're making the motion? Yes. We got a motion. Squire Jerry Moody. Who wants to second that? I'll second it. We've got a second here, Mike Moody. Is there any more discussion? I mean, we're looking at advertising for, for a request for proposals for architectural services. We're not building a barn right now. We're just trying to get a design on it so that we can look at the cost and understand it. We can delve in as detailed as you want on run call time and response times and all this thing. But, you know, our county is growing. We're not going to avoid this. 
I mean, you know, the you know the, the idea that we've blown everything that you had planned out over what forty thousand dollars is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm going to ask that you please refrain from the way that you talk at this table. Please be respectful. That's all I ask. That's all anybody asks. So we've got a motion, and we've got a second. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Mark Beaverson, we're going to call a roll on a motion here. Call the roll, please. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Squire Beaverson? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? No. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Motion passes. We will get that request for proposal uh, out and uh, go from there. We'll talk about this obviously later. I have another question. Uh, is it okay that we figure on building? Do we have permission to build at the park? The park? I think that's pre park or pre mature right now. That's premature. Okay. Okay. And okay. I'm gonna. Uh, uh, Randy has been sitting here patient, and I appreciate that. And then I'm gonna uh, add to the agenda the uh, issue with plumbing in the sheriff's office. We've got a, a horrible problem. Uh, with that, I don't want that to wait three, it can't wait three weeks. We've got to get somebody on. He's passed out before the meeting started uh, some estimates that he's gotten, three estimates. It has to do with the cast iron uh, plumbing or stack in there that is cracked and is going to need to be replaced with PVC. And uh, You've got three estimates. Are they all? Have you looked at? Yeah, the, they're all basically the same. Basically right. the I'm same. Motion. We go with RKRBK Enterprises for thirty-eight eighteen. We've got a, and we've got a motion. Second. And we've got a second for Beaverson. Now let me say this: it doesn't make any difference either one of the three. You do understand that this is construction behind walls. And there could be unforeseen I mean, things as we get into it. That's pretty typical of right. these types of things. So, uh, and I'm most of us don't do all the demolition. Okay. Most of that's it. right. So, yeah. they don't have, you know, and the drywall, put back the drywall. Yeah, no, I'll do that myself, so I don't have to wait on somebody else to get. It. Are you a drywall finisher too? Well, I'm sure. Okay. Here. Well, For here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the motion is to uh, accept the. Uh, I'm sorry. Randy. Is there a preference on your part on one over the other? I don't care. It needs to be done. The only reason I would say RBK is because he does most of our work. He's local. If I call him, he'll drop what he's doing come right now. He's done. These other companies, yes, you know, I could I had turned some of them down because he said, well, it might take me three weeks to get you a price. Well, I can't wait three weeks. Have have I've been working on this since Wednesday. RBK has done us quite right. a few favors. Over and he does a lot of stuff for free for us, too. Yeah. But okay, I, I the motion is to accept the, the uh, quote from RBK Enterprises 3818, and that way we can, once we, if we approve this, we can go on and get started right, uh, right away. Which but it's going to be done after ours, yes. so I'll probably, if he can do it, he said he probably could do it, and not the rest of them said he could, we can start Saturday morning. Okay. Because and, and, nobody can be in there. I mean, it's, okay. it's a terrible smell now. Yeah. But this will uh, fall at any time. Well, let's go ahead and, and dispose of this motion first. There's something else I'll say. Um, call the roll, please. Squire Beaverson? Yes. Judge Riley? Yes. Squire Travis? Yes. Squire Jerry Moody? Yes. Squire Brewer? Yes. Squire Mike Moody? Yes. Can I get oh. a copy of the bid, please? I'll motion. Do you need the no, motion passed? Tomorrow would you I'll get you there. Uh, yeah, this one. We've got a, a half a dozen of them coming your way. One is plenty. Okay. Um, what, one of the things that we've been uh, wrestling with over in my office and in the courthouse, is, and it may be something similar, we don't know. I uh, agree. But, you know, there, there's just something happens, and all of a sudden you start getting the sewer gases uh, that come into my office, I guess. Uh, Lynn, I don't know if you've had that uh, over yeah, in your she office. Has it's, it's, it's pretty disgusting, and 
uh, you want to do a, a smoke uh, test of, of right. some kind of seed. And the way things we did, I even had a plumbing engineer out here. We had sculpted all the pipes with the cameras. We can't find nothing. They didn't know what to do. I eventually put there. We had two drains upstairs in the men and women's bathroom. And every once in a while, because you don't use them all the time, you got to pour water because of the D track rising. Mm -hmm. Well, kept doing that, still didn't smell. So one day I just put a ball in each drain, left it for a couple of weeks, the smell went away. Smell went away for a few months. They come back, so I did it again. But now the smell's getting worse again, and I still have the balls in the drains. And we raised the stacks on top of the courthouse. Oh, to get them, because we had the air conditioning units there, and we thought maybe the smells from up there, and the sucking, blowing it in. Well, now they're high enough. And I don't know what else to do but a smoke test. But I'm going to have to have everybody on board because even the fire department, because you know, I, I may fill that whole courthouse up with smoke when we do this. Is that smoke test going to cost more than $1,000? I have no idea. We don't know I know it, it'll take about five hours to do it. Okay. But if I have them there, just in case they can blow out the smoke. So. Okay. Um, and uh, that may be something that needs to be done after hours or... Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. Set one of the things that we had a problem with was that there's a restroom right above my office, and there's because of the I guess the thickness of the floor, five the different floor. floors yeah, right. in there, and you know all of a sudden I see that this dripping coming down into my office, and so uh, you'd look at it a couple different times. Finally, uh, you you pull the whole commode up and find out well there's five. Right. You know, there's nothing wasn't enough for that there. wax seal to even seal, so we suspect that that's, I haven't seen the problem since, but, uh, but uh, you know, this happens when court uh, using the restroom. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. So, uh, okay, so you've got, you, you got, you're good to go with uh, RBK, and let's get that project started. Um, okay. Uh, next up is. Uh, no, I'm good night. All right, thanks, Randy. Take care. Uh, next up is uh, uh, employee pay rates, and as you all know, I, and it, it, it's it's very frustrating to me. But you know, I'm, I'm beyond that. Uh, you know, we got to do something with pay rates for employees. We're coming up on, on budget time. We're, uh, where we're going to be considering uh, requests from the fee offices on on uh, 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 deputies' uh, uh, salary caps, uh, we need to, to look at you know are we going to change any of the elected officials' pay rates that will take effect not until the new term for magistrates or or uh, anybody in the like the county attorney uh, jailer. Uh, uh, so anyway, I thought probably the best thing to do because I'm not going to put the time into like I did before. I'm going to uh, I want to establish a committee of Mike Moody, Jim Travis, and Brett Beaverson to take a look at employee pay rates. Uh, that would include the committee could, can include any department head that you want to uh, uh, bring in to to determine this. But I'd like for you to make a written proposal. Uh, hopefully by the by mid January, uh, where our pay rates uh, need to be for employees or for elected officials, uh, do we want to keep? You know, this is something else we can decide whether we want to keep five magistrate districts or do we want four magistrate districts or six or uh, uh, whatever. I'll let that committee take a look at that too. I don't anticipate anybody will want to change that, but uh, we do not have. Uh, yet the census detailed census numbers in order to redraw our magistrate districts but but pay rates primarily for elected officials and our county employees and i would do that um, as i put in here uh, to reflect the current market to retain existing employees and to aid in the recruiting of new county employees so uh, please consider that as well so if you all would please uh, serve on that and take care of that. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, with three of us on there, that means we can have absolutely no discussion with anybody else on board about this. That's correct. So yeah. if I wanted to say, hey, Judge, what do you think about this? I can't do that. Or, uh, that's, a, or that's a secret meeting. Uh, 
That's a roving meeting. You yeah, see, it's not certainly a yeah, I see your I see your point. Yeah. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there. That, yeah, yeah, I bet there's the three of us uh, get our proposal together and put it on that form. How about so, a, how about two two of you on the committee? Well, that's that's fine. That's fine. I just don't want to get into a conflict where somebody says. I agree. That, we had, you we, know. Uh, yeah. Certainly, uh, none of that would be with the intention to. Oh no. Skirt. skirt no. Okay. Which well, that's you what, have to have intention. I'll, to do. I'll bow out of that committee and let you two guys have. That. Okay. So if, the, if you don't mind doing that, Mike sure. and Brett, if you all. Yeah, will, I just don't want to have a. You know, when when you already got half the people on there, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it is helpful. Yeah. You're, you know, you're walking on the tight fence right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so just the two of you, sure. uh, if you would agree to do that, and uh, uh, you know that's that's a lot of work. Oh, by the way, any information that reports that you need from uh, Brittany or, or Lindsay with regard to you know employee start dates and their current pay rates and uh, you know, any of that information, we can get you and sure. uh, uh, you know, broken down by department. And, you know, you know, certainly we don't have any say so on pay rates at the uh, right. fee offices. So, right. uh, but I think it's helpful to 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 use those as a, as a reference in, in some cases. So, okay, uh, if um, I don't think we need any, uh, yes, uh, I think it would help if we take the road department out because no money actually comes from the road department. It does not. From the doesn't make any difference. They still need a pay rate. Right. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm yeah, not I don't want to exclude the road department. You, you're saying make two different things. Or, no. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <clears throat> because the, the road department needs to pay more for CDL drivers. That can all be considered in a pay rate proposal. Yeah, yeah but you're, you're not understand. They need to be by themselves. They will be by themselves. That's the road department. And and what pay raise they get should not have anything to do with what we pay recycling or anybody. Exactly. Else. That was in the proposal that I did in October 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was already separated out in the proposal that I had in October 2020. Okay. We still have that. I did not know that. But we talked about it today. Yeah. Well, that, and, no. But, and that would give him more flexibility. Uh, I think you said the people now. We're, and, and we're about ready to hire one back that left. So, okay. uh, yeah, he, he needs, needs help with it. Okay. I'm going to take a moment, apologize to the court, everybody in this room, especially the ladies. Uh, I appreciate you getting uh, um, Okay, uh, next item is uh, uh, we've got a Proposal to hire uh, an employee for the recycle center. Uh, Dennis Martin, uh, at a pay rate of $13 an hour. Um, I have already run a background check. Motion to approve. We've got a motion to approve, approve hiring Dennis Martin. I need to add a caveat to that also. Um, uh, Dennis Martin to the recycle center at a pay rate of $13 an hour. And that's subject to a drug screen. Uh, mm -hmm. The background has already been done and approved by a couple of folks here. Uh, I think we'll be okay with that. Uh, the other caveat is that and this man does not have a GED, which is required. Uh, we've, been, we've faced this situation before. We have gone on and hired uh, people before with no GED with the anticipation that that employee pursued uh, completing the GED program, and Karen's already gotten some information um, with uh, Kentucky and Works, I think, on, on getting him into a program to get that GED, and I think he really wants to get it. So, so what is this probationary period, just to refresh my memory? Uh, mm -hmm. Probation is generally it's 90 days, but we're going to make this subject to uh, the GED, so, you know, if it takes him 180 days, you know, it's, it, uh, you know, we're not going to let him go forever without completing that. But um, so anyway, we've got a motion, and we. Uh, uh, I you, Jim seconded. Brett made the motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 
carrying on and we'll get that in the, in the works. Uh, also have a proposal from the road department. We got this uh, late this afternoon. One of the workers, <coughs> excuse me, James Evans, uh, who left, he actually was uh, started February 22nd of this year. He left October 14th of this year, just a little over a month ago, uh, to uh, uh, pursue uh, greener pastures, I guess. He would like to come back, and we're gonna, we're proposing to bring him back at the same pay rate when he left, it's $14 an hour. Uh, I would want to, uh, it's not necessary, it's not absolutely crucial, it's not gonna fill the deal with me, I just would like to get him back to work up the road department, but I'd like to waive the, the drug screen and background check. This is an employee just left us a month ago. So. Drug screen. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Drug screen. That's fine. Do that. So if I could have a motion to be. Oh, we're going to have him to uh, on the 90 day probation here coming back? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. What was so, the name? Uh, James Evans. So anybody want to make a motion on that? To, I'll make a motion to hire him back with the drug screen and 90 day probation. Okay. At a pay rate of $14 dollars Yes. Hour. We've got a motion. I'll second it. And we've got a second. Squad Brewer. And any questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Next up is um, we've got some reappointments to some uh, the Planning Commission and the Mount Eden Fire District Board. I uh, appreciate a motion to make those appointments of Marshall Mudd to the Planning Commission. Motion that to would, approve Marshall Mudd. That would be a four-year term ending August 2025. And Dale Yates to the Mount Eden Fire District Board, three-year term ending June 30th, 2024. Make a motion to uh, recommend both of those. To approve the my yes. reappointments. Okay. Yes. Motion is to approve the reappointments that I've recommended here. And that's Jim. Who, who's going to second that? I'll second that. Okay. And Tim second it. And Squire Moody. I have a question. All right. I would like to see how she voted. See how? On, on the phone. We, we've got one area up there uh, that people come in out of North Carolina and bought a farm. And going to put uh, uh, marriage thing there, and I have loud music and drinking and everything right next to neighbors, and it's on a very narrow road up there. And they even went, they called me, and I said, "Hey, I can't do nothing on planning and zoning. That's God. Uh, there's two things you deal with. It's God. That's the state highway department and planning and zoning." Okay. Uh, anyway, I, and I want to see how this lady's voting. Okay, well, okay. you're welcome to, to reflect and that. I'd like for her to come before us. I'd like for her to explain when the, when the vast majority, everybody up there, protested it, and they wouldn't even, planning and zoning would not listen to them. Okay, now you're welcome to reflect that in your vote. Uh, we've got a motion and a second to uh, approve these reappointments. If you would please call the roll. Square Gary Moody? No. Square Brewer? Yes. Square Mike Moody? Yes. Square Peterson? Yes. Ms. Bradley? Yes. Square Travis? Yes. Okay, motion passes. And then we're going to move on to where are we? Chris. Okay, this will be Chris. The, request for actually this is basically to increase it's to uh, what we've already approved right? we, we got a each year we get a grant from the state board of bms uh this year i'm putting that grant for buying video laryngoscopes uh, and so i got the price of four that were very uh, budget-minded and when I was at EMS conference in September, I found something that was a little better, more ergonomic, that is for the price of four is about $1,800 more than what the grant was for. So I was requesting approval for the... Uh, the additional $1,815 right. over the grant. Yeah, that's it. Is, 
Is this grant, was that specifically for these, or was that just a grant for you to decide what you want to use? We, it for? we put in, it's called the uh, Block Grant or Senate Bill 66, and each uh, each ambulance agency in the state, uh, well, one per county, not everyone, one per county <coughs> each year gets, uh, can get up to $10,000, but you've got to tell them the equipment you want when you put in the grant and then show that it's been purchased. and. Is this equipment that you do not have now? We do not have it, correct. It's a uh, all range of scopes. It's just, uh, if it were coming out of my regular budget, it's something I probably wouldn't ask for because we have regular living scopes. But this just makes, uh, intubate somebody. It's, a, it's got a video screen on it and it's got a camera. So when we go to innovate, you can uh, look at the camera and see like the vocal cords and the tracheal and all that instead of, Instead of the old way of innovating, we put the rangoscope in, lift up the jaw, and visualize looking down the throat at those same landmarks. This just has a video camera, so so you can see that and watch your information. So the total is $9,135. For all, for all. For all, for all. make a motion that we approve the uh, additional 1854, 1564. I'll well, second that. To use the grant money, too, the 73, so. Yeah, the, the court is already approved the grant money a couple months ago. So we already approved that. The grant side of it. Oh, did we? Okay, this all right. That's just the other job. Product. Okay, sorry about that. The motion was to approve the 181564 above the grant. Okay, we've got a motion. I seconded it. Okay. Can you add an invoice for that? 1815? Add an invoice for the whole thing. All right. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Grant. Hearing none, motion passes. Next up is Brashears uh, Creek FEMA Project. Um, when, and you can see Eric, uh, Eric Bean's uh, email to Todd with regard to the FEMA project needing another 150 feet of guardrail, which would be another $8,200, just need approval to um, um, uh, add the uh, $8,200 worth of guardrail. I'll make a motion that we approve the additional $8,200 for the 150 feet of guardrail and that money come out of the road department guardrail funds which has $15,000 in it. I may be mistaken, but I believe that's Squire Moody's district, and I think that's oh, Squire Moody's. Do it. Okay, well, I'm sorry. What did he say? <laughs> Squire Moody has made that I'm motion. Sure. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to second and you want to second the motion? I'll second that. Okay. I thought I heard that right. Uh, okay. Did you, did you get that? Not the road for us <laughs> to take it out of the road for not the general All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. In your packet is the October financial statement. Um, as you can tell, we're next to broke. Uh, uh, I'm only kidding. We um, are doing quite well financially. Uh, that doesn't last forever, though. So that is in your packet. If you have any questions of Doug, please uh, don't hesitate. Okay. Next up is invoices, bills, and transfers. I do have a couple questions. Motion. I need a motion. Motion to pay the bills and make the transfers. I'll mm -hmm. second it. Square Moody. Soon to be followed by our favorite motion. Okay. Uh, Square Moody. And, wait a minute. Okay. And Square Brewer. Okay. Okay. On page 88 of that. Page 88. We have the uh, Spencer County Clerk, uh, Felicia Notary, for $19. Are we paying physical court paying the county clerk to notarize things for us? We charge the customers to notarize. I mean, are we a customer? I mean, what, what is, okay, just what is that $19 charge for a notary? That is the fee that a notary pays when they get their commission to have the uh, document recorded and take the oath. Anybody who becomes a notary, anyone, pays $10 to the Secretary of State's office to get the procedure going, and then when they come to our office, they pay our office $19. Okay. Well, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But what is this particular $19? It's the $19 fee. Fee. That's $19 that eventually will come back to us. 
Okay. But that is a fee that they charge. All right, on page 89, the next page. Reimbursement for a refrigerator for 243. That was a purchase uh, of a refrigerator at Costco uh, for the county judge's office, it's a little dormitory type refrigerator freezer uh, that we have uh, done without for a good many years, but uh, it's time, it was time I approved that purchase. Um, and okay. I, I did check, uh, I, I, I don't particularly, uh, I like to support local businesses as if I can, uh, and I did check with Channel Appliance, uh, who is more of a local uh, vendor, and their advice to me is if Costco has it, get it from Costco. So, okay. All right. Uh, question for Doug on the uh, transfers on the last page, eighty ninety-six. Uh, we've got these additional, up the top of the page, we've got these additional invoices. Uh, why aren't they included in our regular invoices? So one in particular? No, or one all of I mean, The whole block. Well, there's something like the occupational tax refunds we don't include, include in there for one reason, because legally we can't put the name out there in the public to know if it was Say Jim Travis Builder and you were getting an occupational tax refund, you're a one person business where somebody like the school or the county's got multiple employees and they auditors have always recommended that be separate. Okay, what, what about AutoZone and Ace Hardware and AT and T and um, and those? Some of those Problems. I think they come in on the last day, right before the court meeting. We knew there was also three weeks between court meetings, and okay. the time wasn't from getting all from all the department heads. Maybe okay. Uh, the last the last four quality contracting uh, that uh, uh, line item road department four four seven B, which is the whole straw, or which is the uh, Shears Creek. Uh, project we're having now that comes to 106,000 where does where does that where does that reflect I mean I couldn't find where that come in because if you go down to the road and jail fund invoices right below that it says we transferred 120,000 from 447B which is the Brashears Creek to 9990 which is or from 990 which is road department reserve yeah reserve for transfer mm -hmm. right I cannot find where any of this comes together. Well, these were invoices pertaining well, to. Doing. It's a new account line item for Brashears Creek, but we were doing the transfer. And this, the, that Brashears Creek line up. item, uh, 447B, only came into effect in September. Well, that's when they had this slide and the right, right. started. And so, so, that's when it was in September. I understand so, that. But we've the had money we spent is because they just did a bunch of the work. I know that. But where I, I can't find out where these transferred came from the reserve and and that's we're, we're doing the transfer. That's why we're doing the reserve transfer for tonight. But and that's hundred and twenty thousand is more than what these it's for quality contracting, Haneke and ASL that are dealing with that project. But if we just put enough in there for that other project, if there's some other work to still be done, we'll just be doing another transfer next time. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, if we have, if those are all the bills, and later if we need more money, what if it's on work for money or uh, Doing the truck repair that we know we're doing right now, we're going to have to do, and we're not sure what it's going to cost. Might need another transfer. We may have to make another transfer to truck vehicle maintenance because I didn't even really look when we approved tonight to do on the other. If we have 15000 in that line item, we really don't have the $3,000 in a line item right now to do the sure Need to add a transfer for the RVP bill, we just approved the three thousand eight hundred dollars or whatever it's like. The fifty four forty seven B line item. That's a new line item for that particular project. Yeah. Is that the FEMA or is that the... so far we haven't paid anything on that road project yet, other than just general 
labor or whatever as far as I'm aware of. Is that, that the FEMA project or is that the emergency slide? That's the emergency slide. Emergency slide, okay. And by the way, the, that road is supposed to be open. If it's not already, I think no later than Wednesday. Thank <clears throat> God that that's finally going to be reopened. And this will be reflected in next month's paperwork. Okay. In our uh, 2021 annual budget mm -hmm. that we passed, which took effect July 1st, in, uh, on page 29 of that, in uh, item line 9990, which is in the road department, we had a reserve there for transfer of $274,000 extra, basically, mm -hmm. is what it was. Then, in our October statement, which is today, there is, in the, in the, in the uh, 447B, there's a $175,000 transfer into that fund. And then in a reserve for transfer in the, in the road fund, the 9990, it shows 943000 instead of the two hundred forty. I can't picture where all that money is coming and going from is my, is my issue. Well, currently, at the end of October, Reserve for transfer in the road fund, there was 768000 Right. right there was 943000 and we transferred out 459000 of that to somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah. And now there's 768824 in the road fund reserve, where July the 1st, there was 274000 where, where does that money come from and where does it go? I, I just don't understand it. Well, when we did a budget amendment, well, technically, with the surplus money that we had, or the truck license money that we, when we amended it, we put it basically in reserve for transfers. So we just basically put it there, and then we could transfer it where we needed it, whether we no, decided it, to it was not. do it truck was repairs or more black It was not put in reserve. It was put back into the truck license budget. But now, a couple of meetings ago, mm -hmm. well, there was no think, truck license. That's no. in the receipt side. A couple, a, uh, a couple of meetings ago, we, we, we transferred 500000 I think, from the general budget to the road fund. Well, that was and probably about <coughs> the direct deposit. It, it was. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I'm getting at. Is, is it went into, the, yeah, I asked about it, and it went to the reserves for transfers as part of that. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Yeah. It to be transferred out to the projects that was received for. Most of the FEMA money, when we received that, has been deposited into the general fund to begin with. And the reason we do that is, on some of these disasters, some of it is road-related, some of it may be park-related or a courthouse, whatever. And we can't spend road mo send money to the road fund back to the general, but we can general the road without it. Understand that. Really good question. Yeah. But when we... The truck license money is on the receipt side. Right. When that's put into the appropriation side, it was basically put into like reserve for transfers or whatever, and then we can transfer it and put it on where we talked about using it for Washburn Lane or what if it's truck repairs or doing more black topping for each district or whatever. But again, you know, I, and like I said, I'm a, I have a problem with the reserve for transfer in the road department going from 274 to uh, 768 within a couple of months. You know, wh where is that coming from? That's, I, I just don't, that's why I'm sorry. I'm not a bookkeeper or CPA. Well, we, we've been, anyway, uh, we have been about 500, 7, 774. Yeah. Here, I said 274 and 500, 1,000 is. Is 774. Well, I think you need to look at the figures a little closer than that because it, 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 they fluctuate over and over and over again. So. Well, uh, I, I know you just found out about this before we came to the meeting. We had state grants for over a million four hundred some thousand dollars, which is one thing we didn't demand. Get, get with, uh, hang on a second, get with Doug and Brittany and the well, you know, and, and and detail, and detail, explain that to you so that you do understand. Yeah, I know, and the reason I brought it up, and, and that, that's always your suggestion, that, that I meet with Doug and I meet with Brittany and I meet with you in your office. Well, when that happens, it's me and Doug, me and you, me and Brittany talking. You know, it's my word, and not saying anybody's doing anything wrong or anything, but, you know, this is an open meeting. 
I think all these guys need to hear what I'm saying. And you, they've heard that. Yep. Uh, and I, what I'm saying is to, to, to satisfy what your curiosity is on that, sit down with Doug and Brittany and let them go over the details uh, and of that. The, the, the one thing, please, to remember, too, is that we've done a tremendous amount of paving, of which in, I think, three tranches we've requested reimbursement for the discretionary paving and flex funds. Uh, well, we've and, still, uh, had, still got about five or six hundred thousand. We've still got Spears in. Drive. That's not going to go to the road fund. That'll go to the general fund. But Spears Drive that we're still wrestling with, trying to get reimbursed for that. And we've got a lot of projects yet to go. I mean, I, so, we're still going to have a lot of reimbursements on these projects that we've approved to bid uh, bridge work to be done on the East River and some of these other projects. So I, I, I keep bringing up, there's one more thing I'd like to you know, Sure. Uh, the land that Scott Travis offered oh, to... We're still need to go and pay the bills, I believe. You are correct. Okay. We, we've got a motion and we've got a second. Am I correct? Yes, correct. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. I'm going to pay the bills to the transfer. Uh, okay, right. square track. The, the land, Scott, that you offered to the county, is, and we voted last meeting to spend money for the site evaluation and the survey on it, is that off the board? I don't know what's on the board anymore. Okay. I mean, Chris got a whiteboard over there. Yeah. Chris said we're going we to need to build this uh, EMS building on the Waterford Park property. Okay, which is not what Scott has offered to give the county. The cost of construction on what he offered would be more than the cost of construction on the Waterford Park. Plus, we would have an ambulance right there for the ball games and stuff, and we thought we was better off. I went to planning and zoning, planning and zoning. I told them where we wanted to build it at. Would it be okay? And they said, yes, it's county property. You can build any kind of county building there you want, and it is not in the front. My and question is, is we voted last meeting to approve spending for a survey from the Scott land Scott was going we to We did not get a survey. And the site evaluation, is that? That's off the table. table. Yes. Yes. Are you not going to donate the land to the county anymore? No, he didn't. Go ahead, Scott. <clears throat> All I'd like to say is, as long as I own that land, and I've got 63 acres on one deed right there, and it's right beside the firehouse, my family all lives there, I work there. As long as I own that land, if the county needs it, if they need a half acre, I'll give a half acre for anything till the day I die. Regardless. My question is, we, we voted to spend money for a survey and a perk test at our last meeting. Is that not going to happen? Well, the health department does the perk test. Well, uh, I, asked for, and, I asked for permission tonight to see if we were going to get, if it would be okay to build on the office floor. And the judge said, no, we're not going to bring that up. Or, I forgot the exact words, but in other words, uh, Everything that we kind of work for is kind of blown up just a little bit. But I, I'm going to fight y'all to help <laughs> we're to get this building. Yeah. Because I believe... We haven't it. killed the building. We, all we no. did when we were trying to get hire an architect uh, right. to yes. design the building, we haven't even discussed... More. I, I guess Jim's question is... And it's going to come up. Do we need to resend the motion that we, to spend the money? That, I mean, that's, I'm assuming that's what your question is. Well, I mean, we haven't spent any money on it. Okay. Then, but I mean, it's still out there. But there's no sense if that's not what's going to work for us. There's no sense in us moving forward in that direction. You want a motion to rescind that? I didn't make the motion. I can't rescind the motion. You can make a motion to rescind it. Do you want me to rescind the motion? Is that going to make everybody? I think sense? that might make us. So, I would so, hate for somebody to leave here with a hat. Okay. I make a motion to rescind the thing and just do away with everything. Mm -hmm. We'll start from scratch again and maybe that'll make everybody happy. And that's a motion. If that's what y'all want, and that's the way I'm not do. sure I understand that motion. I, mean, but, I don't uh, either. We don't, I don't understand the, the, the point that Jim is making is we don't need a survey, we don't need a perk test on the land that Scott had offered. 
for yeah. this purpose. Yeah. We don't need that. And uh, so let's just not do it most of the time. Let's just not. Say, let's let's just not. There's one thing in the rule of Roberts, and I'm a donor, that nothing can override a rule to a journal. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Right here, I make a motion to adjourn. Motion to second. He motion, I second. I thought that was Squire Fever's okay. second of that motion. That's how At least that's the way I heard it. I could be wrong. All those in favor? Aye. We are now adjourned. Okay. Let's just stay all night. Well, first of all, I've got to make sure that the clock has changed because it's yes. fast. Yes. Yes. Back. Did you make you tired looking at it? Oh, okay. I guess it's cold, isn't it? No, it's not. Oh, okay. When I saw the cleaner hanging on the chair, I thought, yeah. if he went outside, he'd be back for that. Oh, man. Well, I wanted that to transfer, but we can still pay an LRBK. You may get that sheriff work done and be looking for a check before the next court meeting. But I saw oh, the transfer right. money and put it in the sheriff's line, but I think we can take out other county buildings expenses or something. Okay. Do it, but I was looking at it because I know he, as soon as he gets done with the project, he's called looking for a check. But. Uh, All right. I don't know uh, how to explain. Maybe yeah. Lennon can explain to Jim the budget. I don't know. Turn this off. Or. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't pay attention if Brett went in there or not. No.